Hi, today's topic is how to connect two Bluetooth low energy devices together. On the one side we have the NRF51822 from Nordic Semiconductor as a server or sensor device that sends data over Bluetooth. And on the other side we have the receiver, that's the ESP32 from Espressif. And this side receives the data and can do some some analyzing. And before we start, I wish to thank you all for the year 2016 with some German sweets. So this is our sample configuration. On the one side we have our NIF51822 device with the SI7021 relative humidity and temperature sensor. And I also connect there a UART converter, the CP2102. And on the other side we have the ESP32 from Espressif connected via a CP2104. So let's have a glimpse look at the code, just an overview. If you want to read more, just download my example from GitHub. So we start not on the top, we just start at the bottom. The first start point is this, the app main entry point. And we see that the Bluetooth controller is initialized and the get client test function is called. And this is the function above. And again, the Bluetooth is initialized and enabled and we register just our Bluetooth client. And this is this function. And we register our callback functions this is for the generic access profile that sets the connection and the startup to our Bluetooth low energy service. And after that, we also register the general attribute profile client callback function. So we can also receive the attribute callbacks. And then we register our client and also we start the scanning for Bluetooth services. So we start with the scanning with all device in reach to our ESP32 and the ESP32 receives some callback messages. Maybe if we found a device, then we check if the device name is known by our service. And just for testing purposes, I only search for the NAF SI7021 service. That's my Bluetooth low energy service on the NAF51822. So if the name of the device and the found advertising name equals then we stop the scanning and established in connection and this is done with the generic attribute callbacks and so we receive a callback with this function and as you see this is function is very long just a brief overview to this function so first of all we hopefully receive an open event and after this we search for services on this device and if we found a service we get in search result event for every found services and then we print out just the UUID for the service. And a special purpose for our device, if we found an 128 UUID, then I just get the characteristics for this service. And for every characteristics, we get a get characteristics event. And if the characteristic have the notify flag, then we get the descriptor for this characteristics. And if not, we just get the next characteristics. And for the, and for the get description, call we get an get description event and if it fits to our service then we just prepare a value and we just write to the characteristic description the value of one so that's the point where we switch on the notification then we receive a write descriptor event and then we just register our client to the notification so we can receive the notification and it's identical to receive our sensor data and after register for notification for every new value we get a notification event and then we just print out the value data to our display so let's clean our building and do a build that could take a while 
So let's wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. Maybe took on my system just about one minute, but only for the clean building. If you just change one file, so you only have to wait seconds for compiling. So while we wait, we can bring our device to flash mode. Then we just press the make flash command. So we have an error, do it again. And just as you see, just we close our debug window in PuTTY and just bring the ESP32 back to flash mode. And then we start the make target flash again. And now it runs. So flash, 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 flash took also a while because our program is very big. Just the whole Bluetooth stack and what have you. So many libraries are involved in this small project. And sorry for the crude code. It's just one spaghetti code, as we call it. So let's open up our debug windows for our UART output. I have on one side the NF51822, the Nordic device, and on the USB 0 output window we have the ESP32. I just leave it at USB 0 because the flashing program from Espressive just expect the device on TTY USB 0. So that fits. And then let's press the reset button and see what's going on. Here on the left side we have our UART output from the NRF51822, the Bluetooth sending device. And on the right side we have all the output from the ESP32 client side. And we can see first of all the ESP starts up the Bluetooth stack, then connect to the NRF51822. And after the connection the ESP32 receives all the attribute data and also the descriptors and on one descriptor the ESP32 switches on the notification and we see on the left side on the NRF51822 that the notification is enabled and the sensor data is sent out via Bluetooth and on our right side on the ESP32 we see that the data is receiving just in raw form, but that don't matter. We can just recalculate the temperature and humidity data. And just for testing purpose, we start our ESP32 with a reset again, and we can see the NRF51822 loses the connection and stops the notification. And after the ESP32 is up again, the connection is established and also the notification is enabled and all the sensor data is sent out again. And just for testing we do it a third time and the same procedure starts again. And we can also compare the hex data from both sides. So you see it's exactly the same data that's transmitted over the air via Bluetooth. So let's have a look at the bench. This is our setup, the ESP32 and the, the NIF51822. And both are connected to the UART converter. The NIF51822 is connected to a CP2102. And the ESP32, as you see, is only connected to a CP2104. And we can use the 3.3 three volt output of the CP2104 because it deliver much more current than the CP2102. So that's the reason why I don't use any voltage regulator anymore and the device should run stable on this UR device or whatever you want to use. But for me it's okay because we want to debug the device and also program the device over UART. And 
and so we can also use the 3.3 volt without any voltage regulator anymore. And as you see on the NIF51822 there's also the SI7021 humidity and temperature sensor connected via the I square C bus or to wire interface and that's the reason why the Nordic device can put out the sensor data over the air. And on the UART I want to show you there is the data line blinking but I see that's very clear to see with the eyes but not so clear with the camera. So thanks for watching today and I hope you learned something and give me a big thumbs up and also please subscribe and support my work and as always have a nice day and I hope to see you in the next year. Bye bye.